Rhythm. Rhythm when you're looping is so important. When I say rhythm, I'm talking about the drum machine built into the pedal. So together, let's take a deep dive of some of the built-in rhythm functions that come with this Boss RC600. So first thing we're gonna do is look into the options, explore what variations we have to work with, decide how we want the drums to interact with the song. Then I'll do a demonstration showing how I might implement some of these rhythms, and then I'll give you some of my pros and cons thoughts. When you first turn on your RC600, the home page is called the play screen. From the play screen, click loop, click loop again, and you'll see this page where the knob number three takes us to all the rhythm option. Let's scroll through a few of these options so you can see how we can tweak them. Knob number one is to pick the genre. Knob number two is to pick a pattern within that genre. Knob number three is some variations within those patterns within that genre. And knob number four is you can pick kind of the patch type of drum sounds you wanna use. So come under the desk with me and we'll play with some of these rhythms. Ah, all right, we'll do a little close up of the looper here. To demo some of these beats, we are just gonna be on the first screen of the rhythm menu. On this menu, you can choose between genre, pattern, variation, and what kind of kit you're using. What do they have for like a blues drum? What if we change the tempo? Here we go. That's a blues shuffle. Ooh, swing. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do up, do up, do up, do up, do up, do up, do up. More of a fusion beat. Oh, it's very fast. So to change the tempo, we just tap. You can tap this button or use any of these knobs to make it go up and down. Switch up the pattern here. Little variation. Little bossa nova. Have a little bossa nova. Oh. An R and B beat. Mm, mm, mm. Pretty swung. I don't know. What do you guys think of the triangle sound? With this same beat, let's try to switch it to a different kind of drum kit. Here's some live drums. Does that sound live? Light drums. Heavy drums. Metal drums. What do we think? Do these drum kits sound accurate to you? Jazz drums. Ooh, playing with brushes. Cajon drums. These are this is the kind of the most interesting sound. Yeah, we're playing on the cajon drums. Joyful drums. Yeah, we're playing on the cajon drum. Say yeah. And we can mix up, mix up the kind of genre. This is, a, this is pop cajon drums. Let's go back to more of a live drum. Live. Live. And we'll switch the pattern up. Here we go. I don't know. We're just playing the live, playing the live drums. 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 What other genres do we have here? 
No, I don't speak. I know what you're saying. And I don't need your reasons. Don't tell me cause it hurts. No, no. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Change the genre. Here we go. Funk. Don't speak. I know just what you're saying. I don't need your reason. When you jog over to the next page on the right, this is where we get to pick how those rhythms interact with the loops. Basic time signature, knob number one, and then knobs two and three. These knobs dictate how we trigger the start of the drums and how we trigger the end of the drums. Our first option says loop start. And this just means the drums kick in as soon as we hit one of the record buttons. For this setting though, in order for the drums to start at the right tempo, you have to tap the tempo with your finger on the tap tempo button. And then you gotta be ready for the drums to start as soon as you hit the play button. One, two, three, ah. Uh. Yeah. So on this setting, all of the loops you record are going to have drums also attached. Our second option is record end, is if I played that same thing. drums come in after I complete the loop. The trouble with that function though is I would recommend probably using a click track because if you record the chords with no rhythm, when the rhythm comes in, the chords and the rhythm might not be in sync with each other. If you want to hear more about using click tracks in your performance, let me know down below in the comments. The third trigger option is kind of interesting because it will trigger the drums to start the intro. So when I click the record button, the record button is gonna blink and blink and blink until I start the loop. A one, two, top of the loop. There you go, and that's the loop. Those are the three ways we can trigger the rhythms. Now, ending the rhythms, that's what we control on knob number three. Our first option for a stop trigger is off which means even when the loops are off, the rhythm keeps going, yeah. You can talk to the crowd and talk to the crowd and, <laughs> you know. Off! So the way to stop the rhythm is by reaching down and pressing the rhythm button. Our second option to stop the drum track is called loop stop, which just means that the drums will stop when you press stop in the loop. So we'll make the loop. When we want them to stop, we just hit the stop. There we go. Our third option for a stop trigger is called record end. The drums will cut out once you're done recording the first loop. The playback will not include the drum track. Like this. Yeah. The drums do not continue. If the rhythm is going and you want it to be off or the rhythm is off and you want it to be on, click the rhythm button and that will. There's a third page of rhythm tweaks, but I think I'm gonna save those for another day and just stick with some of these basic ones. Based on the settings we just went over, I'm gonna have the drum intro trigger before I start the loop so that I can get the tempo in my head. And I'm gonna have the stop trigger set to loop stop so that when I stop the loops, the drums also stop. I set the tempo to 97 BPM. We're gonna start this demo with a drum intro. I have chosen a funk beat on the eight beats three pattern using variation B on a light drum kit. Chorus, here we go. Yeah, and on track one, we'll move over and do the bass.
Come on, turn the radio on, it's Friday night And I won't be long, gonna do my hair, put my high heels on Saturday, I won't be long, gonna hit the dance floor Hit the dance floor, I got all I need I ain't got cash, I ain't got cash I got you, baby Baby, I don't need dollar bills to have fun tonight I love you, baby I don't need dollar bills to have fun tonight So you can see a little bit how you can use those drums in action. What are your thoughts about that demo? Did I use the drums well? There's a couple of other things I could have shown in the demo. Like for example, you can actually change the rhythm mid song. It's so just the piano and the drum track, watch. pretty interesting that even though the drums are part of the loop they're not part of the recording so you can modify the style in the middle that's kind of fun you can even change the drum kit listen to how this sounds <laughs> Cajon kit. I'm really impressed with all the styles and permutations that they put into these drum tracks. They're, they're super fun to play with. And the beautiful thing about using a drum track is your timing is going to be perfect. But here are my criticisms. Musically, I find it to be kind of a lot to have drums on each track. What I would prefer is to have drums on just one of the tracks and be able to take the drums out and back in if I want to without having to take out all the loops at once. The only times I was able to play without drums in the accompaniment is when I turned off all the loops. But what if I just want piano and bass for a section? Or if, what if I want to take out the drums for just one beat or something. Can't really do it if you are using the drum tracks. I'm also a big fan of layering percussions on. So if you add like a shaker or a kibasa to another track, it would be cool to be able to take out the drums and just keep your own hand rhythms. But you can't do that. There's drums on all the tracks. As far as program drums go, these ones are really good. In general, I am not a big fan of the sound of program drums. And sometimes, unfortunately, mechanical drums sound a little bit like karaoke. Even though there's lots of different patches of drums and some are better than others, it's kind of strange to have full on drums without a bass player. So if you're just playing solo, like a full drum kit can be like, too much, in my opinion. But my main criticism when it comes to these drum variations is accessibility. Like when I was under the desk and we're changing the knobs and doing cool stuff with the drums, but it required your hands. Tweaking with your hands and scrolling with the knobs in the heat of a performance, that's gonna be really difficult to do. You can't do it mid song and even doing it between songs, often you're trying to keep the vibe up, right? So you don't want dead air in between each song while you're like playing on your little computer. Plus, a lot of the times I have a guitar strapped to the front of me. So pretend I'm standing at my gig and I'm like, hold on. 
Don't look at my butt. See what I mean? I do think that these drum rhythms are great for practicing. They're way more fun than a metronome. And actually by scrolling through, you can learn a lot about rhythms. I'm excited to hear what you guys think. What do you think of my demo? Do you think I used the rhythms well? Do you use the rhythms in a different way? Thank you, thank you to my patrons who support me each month. I provide them with special perks like monthly song downloads, exclusive VIP streams and watch parties. <laughs> Yeah, we're making it up and playing with the beat. Normally I'd be playing it with my feet. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the patrons. You can get more if you really want in. Yeah. And playing with beats and making up songs.